Hello and welcome to my channel. I am the BA Tutor and as you can tell by the title of this video, today I'm going to be giving you guys some interview tips and tricks for business analysts. So if you're an aspiring business analyst, this is really going to help you for when you are going to go ahead and interview for a BA role, exactly what you need to know, what you need to do, give you some tips and trips around that. So again, if you are new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. I talk about everything in relation to the world of business analysts. So you guys are not going to want to miss out a bunch of other videos where I talk about everything in relation to that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can tell on the whiteboard, I've got here the interview tips and tricks. I'll be walking you through all of the tips and tricks that I have. And here's my strategy with interviews. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Okay. I can sit here or stand here and give you all of the possible questions that you could be asked. You know, they could be 50 to 100 questions and you can go ahead and try to prepare an answer for every single one. But then come interview time with whatever company it is, they could ask you a question that's not on your list. And now all of a sudden you're panicking, you're freaking out. And so instead of that, I take a very simple approach and where I give you practical advice on how to prepare for these interviews. So I'm not gonna have a full list of questions. Instead, I'll talk about the types of questions you should expect, okay? But first and foremost, before we even get to the question, the first thing that I think is a major uh, tip and trick for BAs is confidence, but also know the format, okay? What do I mean by this? So know the format, whether it's an in-person interview or a phone interview, it is going to be very different how you approach both of those things. But in terms of the confidence part here, that is going to stay the same with both of them. So the first thing I need to focus on is when you are going into these interviews, you need to be confident. I don't care how much experience you have or you don't have. If you don't come off or or if you are not confident, then you are just not going to have uh, that great of a chance at having a great interview because this is how you can pretty much guarantee that your interview is going to go well, okay? Um, no company is going to want somebody that doesn't have the confidence at that position. And so here's what I would tell you. If you have gotten a phone interview or even better, an in-person interview, then know that in your mind, that employer, that company has already seen your resume and they are okay with it, okay? And they have liked it enough to actually go ahead and bring you in for an in-person interview or call you for a phone interview. So be confident and have confidence in the fact that they already kind of like you and now it's just up to you to be confident and sell yourself, okay? So remember that. If you're already at the stage of getting the interview, whether it's in person or whether it's over the phone, know that they already like your resume, okay? So they already like what they see. Now it's time to go ahead and just sell yourself. So have that confidence. Okay, moving on to interview a tip and trick number two, okay? Which is prepare by knowing question type okay now obviously for every interview you should prepare right you should absolutely go ahead and do the due diligence but when i say prepare by knowing the question type notice i'm not putting prepare by knowing all the questions because a there's no way for you to know every possible question that they're going to ask you and b even if you do try to study as many questions as possible there's always a chance they ask you a different question so instead like I said, focus on the question type and a very, very common question type that you will probably get asked is a behavioral question, okay? What is a behavioral question? A behavioral question is essentially a question where um, the interviewer, uh, the person uh, asking the question, they usually ask you um, when you're put in a certain type of scenario, how you handled that scenario. So essentially, you know, Tell me about a time that you were faced with the problem and how you solved it. Tell me about a time where, you know, you uh, 
um, where it dealt with difficult stakeholders and how you went about it. Tell me about a time, uh, you know, a project failed and how you, you know, went about it. So basically this question is meant to try to look at how your critical thinking skills are as a business analyst. And this will give them an uh, opportunity to kind of gauge at how you critically think as a BA. Okay. And so uh, you're really going to want to prepare by knowing how to answer these questions. Okay. Because these questions uh, do tend to somewhat uh, elicit a longer response. Um, and so I would prepare by knowing the different types of question types. They could ask straightforward questions, obviously, but one that I would focus on are behavioral questions. And when we talk about prepare, again, prepare by knowing the necessary information as well, right? You're going to want to know uh, the typical things like obviously, um, you know, what requirements are, et cetera. And also you're going to want to know how to write requirements, you know, how to write uh, a BRD, how to write a user stories. Now, not, not in every interview I've had to do this, but in a couple interviews, I've had to write requirements. I've had to write user stories. I've had to write a BRD. And so you are going to want to be prepared for that. Okay. Now I do have a course uh, where I kind of walk through all of this. I have trainings on this. Um, the course is in the description. I have a very high level course and I have a very detailed course. So you guys can go ahead and choose either one um, and it should help you out with this. But the pre preparation is key here. Obviously, uh, you're going to want to know, obviously, the role of a BA. So there is a chance that they can absolutely ask you to write requirements for them to write a BRD for them, to write user stories for them. So be prepared by knowing how to do that, but also be prepared to know how to answer these uh, question types um, that they might okay, ask. Moving on to tip and trick number three. And this one tends to be a little tough for people to grasp. So I'm, grasp, so I'm gonna go over it a little bit more, which is be honest with experiences, okay? The reason why people have a hard time with this one is because they think that if there's something that you get asked and you don't know about it or you don't know how to do it, that you should just lie and be dishonest and just say you know how to do it. Because if it's something that's important and they asked about it, then I should know how to do it. And if I don't, then I'm not going to get the job. Not necessarily. Okay, here's the thing. I've tell, told you this obviously before with point number one, if you have gotten to the interview the employer is somewhat comfortable with your experience already. Maybe they're not completely sold, which is what the interview is for, but they are comfortable enough with it to where you don't have to compensate by lying or being dishonest. Instead, take this approach. If there is something that you get asked about and you don't know how to do it or you don't know that thing, don't say, I don't know, but instead say, you know, that that's something that you did not utilize at your previous uh, company or at your previous experience, but that's definitely something that you're willing to learn, uh, that you're willing to put the work in to be able to compensate for that, okay? So show them that even though you don't have the expertise level that they are maybe necessarily looking for, you are still willing to put in that work and sort of mitigate that uh, by you know, going ahead and saying that you're gonna work on that skill. So again, don't just say, I don't know, and you know, and, and just leave it at that. Make sure you go ahead and let the employer know that, hey, listen, I didn't come across this as much, I didn't need to use it as much, but it's absolutely something that I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to fill in that gap, and I'm willing to make sure that I can do whatever it needs to do to be successful at this position, okay? So go from there. So there's no need to be, um, you know, dishonest. Just just be straightforward, but also remember, don't, don't just say, I don't know. Make sure whatever answer you're giving, when you really don't know, you're doing it in a way where you're ensuring to the employer that, hey, listen, I will absolutely work on this if this is something that is important that you need for this position. Okay, and finally, tip and trick number four. And this one, people always tend to forget this one and just skip over it, but it is so important, which is prepare. And no, it's not the same prepare as point number two, but instead prepare your own questions, okay? 
This is so key, and here's why, okay? In 99.9% .9 of interviews, again, there's always exceptions, at the end, no matter if it's a phone interview or an in-person interview, the uh, interviewer will always ask you at the end, do you have any questions for me, okay? And too many times people will just think, oh, they're just doing that as a formality, they're just doing that to be nice, I don't really have to ask any questions because I don't have any questions, no. You should always, always, always ask questions. Why? Because this is your chance to make a lasting impression before the phone call or the interview ends, okay? This is your opportunity to give that impression that you are going to do what it takes to, you know, obviously uh, get the position, but also be successful. So a sample question you could uh, ask, um, which, you know, I, I love this question, you know, what is someone, so if they ask you, do you have any questions for me? Yes, in fact, I do. Uh, I, you know, I'd love to know what is something uh, or what does someone have to do to, uh, you know, be successful at this position at, at this position as a business analyst from the jump? So what does someone have to do um, to come in and, and hit the ground running and, and make sure that they're successful at this? You know, what are you looking for in terms of that? And so what this does is it puts this you know, picture in the employer's head, the interviewer's head that this person really looks like they are trying to make sure that, you know, they're doing everything they can to not only make sure that they're successful at this position, but they're, you know, obviously have done their due diligence. And this is why I say prepare. This is not something you just think about. You have these written down. Make sure you have these written down or memorized. More so than even knowing the, the interview uh, questions, all of them, instead of memorizing all those, which are impossible because there's like 50 to 100 questions, Instead, memorize these so you remember them and you can ask them, okay? So remember, you always, always want to prepare your own questions and ask them at the end, and they will give you an opportunity to do so. So there you have it, folks. Hopefully that helps you out. My interview tips and tricks, remember, one more time, be confident. So I'll know the format, whether it's in person or whether it's um, over the phone, but in both instances, they have seen your resume, so they are comfortable enough with it. So know that they are um, comfortable and be confident about it. Prepare your knowledge, uh, by, prepare by knowing, excuse me, the question types or the behavioral questions. Prepare by knowing, you know, how to write requirements, um, all of the definitions, etc. Be honest with your experience. You don't have to lie. You can just say, hey, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not something, it's not something that I used out of my previous position, but it's definitely something I am willing to learn. And then finally, prepare your own questions. So there you have it. Hopefully that helps you out. If it did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please make sure to subscribe as always. Thanks for watching.